Hello and welcome back. This is part two of our program, how to cultivate habits so you put your success on autopilot. And we ended the last session on this note that the habits put you on autopilot and that anything that is worthwhile in this life requires effort to achieve success you go up. To go up, it takes effort. To go up a mountain takes effort. Coming down hill is the one that does not require much effort. Unfortunately, it takes you down. So that in life, when you do the hard things first, things get easier from there. Bad habits are easy to form, but then they make life increasingly difficult. Good habits are sometimes difficult to form, but they make your life easy. So, um, one basic thing I learned about habits is the fact that you actually don't stop bad habits. You don't stop habits. You can only successfully replace them. So, if you're going <laughs> to, if it's going to work, it's not going to be a decision to stop doing something. It's going to be a decision to replace what I'm currently doing with another action. So, how do you cultivate habits? Let, let's dig into that. Uh, just a few steps here. Number one, identify the habits that do not enhance your success. So let's go straight to it. You just look through <laughs> your habits presently. Some are good, they've helped you so far and some, some don't really help. When you identify the ones that don't help, we can start from there. Number two, identify the reward that you get from that habit. See, you, you're enjoying, you're getting something. It's, it's, that's the reward. The reward is usually a feeling. It's either a feeling of being in control, you know, or a feeling of pleasure. Whatever that feeling is, that usually is the reward. And you know, it's those temporary rewards that prevent us from the long-term ones. So identify exactly the reward, the feeling that you get from practicing that habit. And then next, Identify a more positive way of getting that reward. Okay, example. Um, you have a habit of waking up in the morning, reaching for your phone, and going on social media. Okay? Now, going on social media can be good, Going on social media can be bad, but the question is, for most people, this is the most productive part of your day. Okay, you're just starting your day. Does going on social media actually add to the ultimate fulfillment of your goals? Does it add to your success as a person? I mean, if you're a career person or, you know, a professional, does it add to your productivity? If you are an entrepreneur, does it bring you money? See, if it does not, then it's, um, it's a pastime, okay? It's a leisure activity, it's a hobby. It's not, it's not adding to your productivity tangibly. But, you know, it's so easy to get hooked on it. Why especially do we like to, to go on social media? Because we don't want the world to leave us behind, <laughs> to pass us by, okay? So that's the first question. Identify the habits that do not really enhance your success. So many people don't realize that as good as social media is for connecting with people, now, you know, we can learn a lot at the same time, it's one of the biggest time wasters on our planet right now. Some people, all they do on social media is to consume. 
Whereas some people are making millions through social media, same platform. Some people are producing, they're creating content. You know, it's amazing. I attended a conference recently and the organizer, the host of the conference, makes millions of dollars every year. He advertises massively, you know, on social media. When he said, I don't have time for social media, <laughs> you know, I said, that's it, that's it. Can you see? Can you see? You know, for him, it's a means of production, not a means of consumption. So if for you, that's the scenario, and now you're so hooked that it's the first thing you do in the morning, and once you start on it, it becomes difficult to put it down, and you get in and in and in and in, and then you're getting behind on the other important goals that you have for the day. You need to track it. What's the reward you, you get? One, uh, being connected with other people. Two, uh, you know what's going on, OK? You know it's empowering to know what's going on. It's just that a lot of the time, most of what is going on has nothing to do with you, OK? So the question, uh, step number three, identify a more positive way to get the same reward. So how do you feel in control? How do you feel like the world is not uh, letting you uh, going past you. You can cut straight to the news for the day, okay, if that's what you need, okay. On the other hand, you can just remind yourself that the, the world did not collapse yesterday. <laughs> What's the likelihood it will collapse totally today? You know, if the priority for you is to read a book, if it's to have a time for meditation, or prayer, you know, if it is to sit down, think over your plan for the day, you know, and set your goals and all that, then put the priority on that. If it is to work on a book, you know, uh, I learned from one of my mentors recently, he wakes up at 5 a.m. every day, he writes, he's writing a book. So he's always working on the book. It may be a paragraph that he's going to write. It may be a chapter that he's going to write. But every day at 5 a.m., he writes. And I'm telling you, he, ch he churns out books massively. So um, identify a more positive way to get the same reward. So if it is being in control, knowing what's going on in the world, that is the big deal, then Find a way to cut straight. If it even has to do with your work, because for some of us, it's checking emails. Now, not all emails are actually productive. Most of them just want to take something from you. So you can choose to prioritize the emails or prioritize the people that send you the emails. And if it is an email, the email that matter, you identify the person, then you go straight to that. You have a lot of time for it. When the time is up, you move on to other things, right? So number four, Identify the trigger for the old habit. Identify the trigger. There's a thought that comes, or an environment in which you find yourself. There's something that comes to your mind that triggers your desire to practice that old habit. Identify it. OK? Identify it. And. Number five, identify the routine action you take after the trigger. Identify the routine action that you take after the trigger. You know what some people have done? Knowing that once they wake up, you know, their hands just reach for their phones, then they never keep sleep in the same room with their phones. Or they don't keep the phone within reach. It's amazing. OK? Identify the trigger for the old habit. All right. I'll stop here, and we'll continue in the next session.